So as you probably know, there's a new version of Across that came out uh, maybe a year or two ago. I'm pretty late to the party. And uh, we, of course, also have T-Max 100, the OG T-Grain film, black and white film from the early 90s. Personally, I've shot a lot of T-Max 100. It's probably my most shot black and white 100 speed film. And I've also shot a fair bit of Across 1. Uh, back when there was an issue with the production of T-Max uh, because of the backer, T-Max 100 went out of production, and so Across 100 was the closest thing you could get. Uh, Delta 100 I'm not going to compare here, because one, the technology is a bit different, and two, uh, the contrast is quite different. Delta 100 is a really contrasty film in my experience, so... So the new Across 2 is supposedly a pretty minor revision. Fuji Film have said that it's a bit higher in contrast uh, and that there may be some other minor improvements, but we're led to believe it's probably different mostly because the production process had to change because uh, lack of material availability or changing factory, something like that. It's not really, uh, they wanted to improve the film as much. And the new Across is also $15 a roll, which is a lot of money for a roll of film. It's an orthopanchromatic film, so a panchromatic film has roughly even sensitivity to various wavelengths of light. So uh, in human terms, uh, red is represented about as bright as green, is represented about as bright as blue. Uh, an orthochromatic film has more sensitivity to certain wavelengths of light, so specifically orthochromatic films generally have brighter greens and darker uh, complementary color of green, so red. Personally, I haven't done a lot of shooting with filters, but I especially haven't done a lot with green filters, and typically yellow and orange filters were more popular, and red if you wanted really dramatic dark skies. So a green filter is a slightly weird choice, but it might work with certain subjects, uh, or if you just want a sort of unique, different look. And with that brief intro out of the way, let's dive into the photos. I will show you comparisons from both 35mm shot on a Leica MP with a Summicron 50, uh, and from my Mamiya 7, uh, with the 80mm f4, those are my two favorite camera lens combinations, at least on film. Uh, so that's what I chose to do the comparison, and they're both very, very sharp systems, as sharp as you'll get in either format. I didn't shoot this on a tripod, and my scanning setup, which is a negative supply uh, system with a Fuji GFX camera, uh, I think is very good, but I can't claim that I've perfected the use of it since this is my first time scanning with it. So take it with a grain of salt, uh, but the scans should be pretty good uh, and much higher resolution than you'd get with, say, a Nuritsu or a Frontier. And after I show the images, I will offer some commentary on them. I encourage you to pause throughout the comparisons and make your own opinions. But if you happen to want my opinion or you don't really feel like thinking that much during the comparison and like writing down your thoughts, then uh, maybe you will find my thoughts at the end useful.
So for me, the comparison is mostly about tonality. I think that either of these films offer a ton of resolution. I'm not as concerned about it. So I'm concerned with tonality and the extension and dynamic range of the film on either end. I'm less concerned about the absolute sharpness because I think both of these films are really sharp. I wouldn't describe either of these films as very contrasty, but definitely Across 2 has a bit more contrast. And it also, if you compare the subjects of the, back, of the photos to their backgrounds, it definitely has more, uh, it has a particular look associated with that color spectrum. So getting back to tonality, if you care a lot about tonality, I would definitely check out FP4, Double X, and to a slightly lesser extent, HP5. I think those are the most beautiful films I've shot in terms of tonality. FP4 has a long toe, so the grays go darker gray and inky and rich. So T-Max is more in the family of HP5, where you have a lot of room to sculpt. I don't like the tonality, tonality quite as much, but it's still really nice, and you can pull down that toe yourself in Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever. I would note that Across has not necessarily darker uh, dark tones, but brighter light grays and whites. Uh, you could describe the highlights as punchier. A lot of people I'm sure will like that. So a quick word on sharpness. I know it's like not the point of this review, and also I didn't collect a big enough sample to really say anything conclusive about it. And there were examples where T-Max looked sharper, and there were also examples where uh, Across 2 looked sharper. So I can't state conclusively. And that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this comparison was useful. Personally, I tend to find side-by-side -side comparisons more useful than just straight reviews. So, yeah. And that's it. Uh, people on YouTube like to say, like and subscribe, or something like that. So, uh... Do it if you want. Mm -hmm.